Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will answering a question I received interestingly twice on a single day from two different viewers. And one mail was from Eric, the other mail was from Dominic and both basically had the same question regarding banded PCBs on motherboards. Eric didn't have pictures but he had an X299 board which was heavily bent apparently on the VRM area and Dominic asked his question regarding a C690 Asus motherboard which he just recently received. It's a brand new board, C690 obviously, and he asked if this type of bend behind the VRM cooler is normal and if he should return his board or not. And that's what we will try to answer in today's video. We will do some experiments, see what kind of bend is okay and what kind of bend would maybe be too much. If you are looking for a great dedicated root server, Hetzner is offering this with the AX41. The AX41 is powered by AMD Ryzen desktop CPU 3600 with 6 cores, NVMe SSDs and 64GB of memory. We already visited Hetzner this year to show how these servers are built. You can find the link to this video in the description down below. And the AX41 is now also available with IPv6 only option for 34 euro per month. Feel free to check it out in the link below. We will first look at this AMD engineering board, which I received several years ago. It is from the first generation of AMD Threadripper. I still have this engineering CPU right here. It is very similar to a 1950X, just much lower clocked and not as performant as we had with the retail CPUs. But it was quite interesting at the time to get this thing like three or four months prior to launch and just be able to play around with the CPU and see what kind of performance we might see later on. And I mean, we all know how it turned out that AMD Threadripper is a very successful platform and pretty awesome CPUs, at least the third generation. First generation was a big pain in the ass. I started to hate this mainboard exactly on the day when I received it because there were so many issues with like memory compatibility and like socket contact issues. Yeah, it was not enjoyable to play around with this board initially but it was still quite interesting. I think I was never allowed to show this board before. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to show it now, but I mean, it's been years, so I guess it also doesn't matter. You can see it's an AMD board, some debug LEDs here, some like additional signal connectors, which are interesting for like debugging purposes. Switches down there, chipset cooler, nothing that special. It's just a pure engineering board. Interesting connector positions for EPS though. But the reason why I have this board right here is because I remember when I first tried to use this with a liquid nitrogen container, I remember that this board was bending heavily, like heavily, heavily. This is pretty even right now, but I remember that when I first used this with this CPU and just tried liquid nitrogen cooled down to like minus 150, even though like it wouldn't really work because there were so many issues with like cold bugs and stuff, this board was bending as hell which is obvious because of the different like copper layers, copper traces that are inside a board like this, and also because of this massive socket. Especially, I mean, if you compare this to any other like desktop board that's compared maybe with like C590 or something like that, you would have your mounting kit mounted on the back for LN2 overclocking. Then you have your mounting pressure through the rods and already this pressure will cause the board to bend a bit. And if you cool down, it will bend even more because of the different thermal expansion rates of your board and also the, the, like, the rods you have on here. But with this socket, it was much worse than before. That's why I have this here. I will mount the CPU in the socket in a second and then just put a liquid nitrogen container on top. We will try to somehow reproduce this and see if it's still bending as much as I have it in my memories. And then we have this X299 board right here which we will use for our second testing to see how much mounting pressure we can apply to the VRM block to yeah, artificially bend the PCB and see what kind of bending the board will survive. Just adding a lot of thermal pads and then see how much it's bending. Just waiting for the point to hit the light and frost effect and then the, the boiling will drastically increase. And now this will be cold. 
actually not that easy to see, but you can see that there is like a, a bend at this point. And this will become worse over time at, at this spot right here. At, you can see this is like pointed downwards compared to the VRM block. And especially if your system is running, this will be much worse because now it's pretty even temperature on the entire board. But if your like outside components will be warmer, then this will be much worse. But you can also already see that there is a yeah quite massive bend appearing in the PCB. I think this board is feeling a bit frosty. All right, I will heat it up and then we will move over to the other project. I just disassembled the VRM heatsink from our X299 motherboard. My plan is to stack minus pad extremes in the VRM area, maybe like one centimeter high. I organized M2 screws for our stock VRM heatsink. And then it should work out that we have a huge stack of like thermal pads in the center and then tighten the screws more and more. So it's spanning the, the motherboard and then we will find out at what point the main board will fail. Just cutting into some smaller stripes first. Isn't that a lovely stack? I hope it will be fine height-wise. We'll see. Perfect. I will just tighten it gently first before we perform our initial test. And then let's see. At least in this state, the mainboard is working fine. You can see we have a BIOS signal just running four channels, a random VGA, just using the container on top to maintain temperature of the CPU. And now let's tighten the VRM cooler. You can see that it's starting to be a banana, but not as much as I expected. I think I'm hitting the limit of the thermal pads. Seems like they're just too soft. You can see there is quite a good bend in here. And yeah, squeeze them down very hard. But there is still display signal. So even with this bend so far, no issues at all, but it's, it's, it's really heavily bent if you pay attention on the bottom. It's bent by about four millimeter, I would say, but it's not enough. The thermal pads in the center were just too soft, but in this state, it's still fine. Yeah, this just shows that the pad was probably too soft, even though this is still a very hard pad. The minus pad extreme is rather hard, but you can still compress it quite a lot. We will try again with these pieces of plastic, just two random pieces I found laying around here. There's no way we, compress, we can compress them, should lead to better results. That looks promising. This should be some heavy bend. This looks really nasty. <laughs> this looks so wrong on so many levels. But as you can see, I can do stuff in BIOS. I don't have any OS on this setup right now, but it just shows that it's still running. It's getting there. It's about seven to eight millimeters. Pretty, pretty awesome actually. I think it is time to stop at this point. We still did not kill the motherboard. It's not my intention to kill it. I just wanted to show that those kind of materials, they can sustain so much more than you think. This is an extreme example. Usually you might be worried about a bend of like a millimeter or two. This is like a centimeter right here compared to the center. And that just shows, it's just a showcase 
how much these kind of materials can sustain before they're breaking, before things are falling apart. So don't worry if there is a tiny bend in your motherboard. But you can see the system is still running in this condition. Even rebooting, detecting all the memory sticks, no issue, even in that condition. After putting the original heatsink back on with the original thermal pad, you can see the PCB is still quite even, which means that even after this heavy bend process, it will still go back into place. Obviously, you should not try this at home. Why would you even do that? I mean, it doesn't make any kind of sense to artificially bend your mainboard. I just wanted to show that this PCB material can sustain a lot more than you usually think. And if your heatsink of your VRM is maybe tightened a little bit too much and there's like a one or two millimeter bend, it's usually not a problem, especially when it's just the VRM area, because like VRM area, DRAM area and the socket area is usually fine, but one thing could be a problem if you're looking at the PCH area, the chipset area, especially if it's a motherboard which does not use a mechanical backplate and you hold it in the area of the chipset like this. I'm not going to do it because it's dangerous, but if you're holding it in the area of the chipset and all the weight from the front is put on, the, on this area, then this could potentially damage your PCH soldering connection if you're holding it like directly underneath the PCH. That's something you should absolutely avoid. Same goes for GPUs. If you're bending it, let's say in the VRM area, which sometimes happens if you're mounting water cooling blocks and you might not have the perfect thermal pad thickness. So you may be off by like a half millimeter and your PCB is slightly bending in the back area. That sometimes happens, but that's usually not a big deal. But if there's something wrong with your thermal pad thickness on the memory modules of your GPU or even something is wrong with the GPU itself, this can be much more dangerous because whenever there are like tiny BGAs involved and you're bending the PCB on tiny BGAs too much, this can immediately cause trouble and permanent damage to solder connections. That's what you should avoid. But if your VRM block on your mainboard, for example, is tightened maybe a bit too much and it looks bent, this sometimes even comes from factory, usually nothing to worry about. Okay, so much about this community question. I hope I could help you with this video. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time. Bye bye.